So Maxwell Bryan, the 25-year-old from Napa, representing Napa BJJ, the featherweight, has a 0-0 record in his amateur career, so this is his debut as well. But in his background, he has seven years of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he has a brown belt from Charles Gracie BJJ. Yeah, I've actually rolled with Max a long time ago, and uh, he was good then. Um, and he continued to roll. He was, I think he was a blue belt last time I rolled with him. And I've followed him, you know, we're friends on social media. I've followed him through his, his uh, BJJ career. And he's very active, very active. Uh, trains with a, a lot of high-level guys out here. And uh, definitely a BJJ specialist. So I'm, I'm excited to see how he integrates his striking into his BJJ here. Um, he's fighting another AKA guy. So you know, again, he's going to be well-rounded. He's going to have uh, striking and grappling coming out of a camp like that. So it's I think it's gonna be a great matchup here at, at Featherweight here for Max. And the winner for most strobe in an entrance has to go to Max Bryant, for sure. You know, sure. I, 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 the, the lights must be hooked up to the music they're walking out to. <laughs> and so uh, the most hardcore music yet is Max, which means the hard, the hardest strobe is also yeah. gonna be Max's <laughs> to, for, the, for, the, for the, Max for the win. But yeah, uh, you know, How do you choose your walkout music? Most of the time, it's just what gets a guy pumped up. Yeah. Something that's going to get them out of the their normal zone and get them into their fight zone. Exactly. Get in that right mind. Shed Sanginov has the 24-year-old out of AKA uh, fighter born in Russia. Or actually, you have a specific one, Tajikistan, yeah, Tajikistan right? Tajikistan, he says he comes from. He, you know, and I talked to him today. Again, this is another, I think this is another little, uh, 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 European transplant. It's another uh, 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 kind of a Khabib clone here. Uh, again, very stoic. Uh, and I don't know if it's just a language barrier or if they're all very stoic, but they all have a, uh, uh, it's a, it's a playful, quiet attitude. Yeah. They're not mugging you. They're just quiet, but you know, lots of smiles and laughs with his group. Uh, you know, he's also coming out to Gladiator, Gladi Gladiator. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it's, uh, is that, I think that's the Spanish in you coming out, right? Because yeah. you're talking. <laughs> or not coming out, yeah. yeah. That little bit of Spanish yeah. in the corner. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, um, if the if the beard is is any representation of this guy's. <laughs> or the back hair. Yeah, yeah. Or the, uh, of this guy's strength. <laughs> he probably has that, that bare strength, too. But we'll <laughs> see here, you know. Uh, you, get a, you get a mindset from yeah. guys out there. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why these guys are so tough. You know, they come from pretty tough areas of mm -hmm. the world where, uh, you know, f fighting in a cage, you know, sometimes can be very, you know, trivial and, and small to them coming from where they come from. Um, and the experience of coming to America and being in a new place, it can't be easy. So, you know, he's obviously fought through a lot just to get here and be able to, to represent his country and to be able to, to fight on this stage here. So I'm excited to see, you know, how he performs. He's two and one. So he's got a little bit of experience. Uh, I think the only reason he's able to fight Max uh, with Max having no MMA fights is, 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 is Max's uh, deep, deep wealth of BJJ yeah. experience. Um, so, you know, I'm interested to see, you know, I don't really know that much about, uh, uh, about, uh, our, 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 yeah. our man. Our Tajikistan? <laughs> yeah, our man from Tajikistan. Yeah. But uh, I guess we're going to find out, you know, um, AKA, like I said, they don't, they don't raise any slouches. Yeah. Most of their guys are well-rounded. They can do both, you know, ground and striking. Uh -huh. So he looks and athletic. Yeah, yeah, he looks athletic. He looks loose. Um, so we'll see what he can do out there. And he has a background in Sambo, uh, which is a specific kind of Eastern European style of martial arts, which yeah, is yeah, a defense. It's like, it's, it's like Russians, Russia's national martial art. Yeah. You know, it's it's the closest thing to MMA yeah. uh, you can have, really, uh, in amateur competitions. I will send it over to Jim Cooley for the introductions. When the action begins, the Kane Vandal. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, hailing from Napa, California. Representing Napa BJJ, he weighed in at 145 pounds even. Max the Gremlin Bryant! His opponent across the cage in the red corner, hailing all the way from Tajikistan. Representing AKA San Jose, he weighs in at 145 pounds even. He holds a mixed martial arts record of two big wins, opposite one defeat. 
John Shed So Sanginoff Bryant getting set for this featherweight bout. It's going to be a very interesting, again, clash of styles. Yeah, I see Sanginoff moving already, jumping around. You know, it looks like he's going to be in and out. Bryant's going to have to learn how to close that distance pretty quick because Sanginoff looks like he's going to have that low stance coming out. Very Bryant, quick pace early to start this fight. Yeah, Bryant's going to, you know, like I said, he's going to have to find a close that distance and get there it is. He's got clinched up, and then that first clinch is always important to see, you know, how much control can I have over a guy? It's important for Sanginoff as well to, to know, you know, can I stop a takedown? If I can, then I can open Oh, great left. Rocked Bryant, but Bryant still fighting back from Bryant's the bottom. Bryant's a sticky jits guy. He's <laughs> got to be careful. He doesn't want to. Another left eaten by Bryant. Bryant is tough. I know that. So he's got to be careful not to let that overzealousness get him in a bad jiu-jitsu situation. It looks like he's composing himself quite yeah, well, though. Absolutely. His face is not reading like he got hit with two straight lefts from Sanginoff. Oh, Again, another left. left hook. Man, Bryant is tough as nails. He's got to feint his way in a little bit. He can't just expect to reach in and not eat shots like that. But again, those BJJ guys sometimes have trouble closing the distance, and that looks like what's happening right now. And interestingly enough, Sanginoff is an orthodox fighter, but is very comfortable in the southpaw position, obviously, the with those sweep. lefts. There it is. Now, Bryant's in his world. I'm on top. Now let's see what kind of guard game that Sanginoff can bring to the table here. Yeah, you're not in Tajikistan anymore. You're in Max yeah, you're, yeah, you're, world. you're in Northern California now, <laughs> and you are uh, going against a very high-level brown belt in jiu-jitsu here. So we have to see what kind of game he has. Is he going to just try to hold on and uh, get the referee to maybe do a stand-up? Oh, oh, looks like for he's going for that straight knee, straight ankle lock uh, from Bryant here. 25 seconds left in this round one. Bryant finally gets his position with about 45 seconds left in this first round. They're yeah, working that knee. Looks like, oh, second off trying to stack him. It. Yeah, looks like he's got that. And now he's on Going top. Ground and pound. Looking to ground and pound. Left. You know what, this is, this is, that was very important. You know, uh, Brian might have been able to stay on top and, and pound out and win that round. Uh, instead, he goes for the submission, and it's possible that letting uh, Sanginoff get back on top and, and score some ground and pound at the end almost, you know, possibly might have lost in that round. Yeah. You know, that was one of those tough calls. You know, short time in the round. Do I go for the submission? If I don't get it, let my guy get back on top and score points, possibly steal the round. Right. Uh, it was a close round up until that moment, and I think with that little reversal that Sanginoff got at the end, that was enough to win him that round solidly. Yeah, both fighters had their moments in that round one. Sanginoff early with his lefts, found his range, uh, but Brian able to eventually get his takedown and work uh, the, the knee bar. Uh, but as you alluded to, Brandon, uh, allowing Sanginoff to get that position and score some points within the last 10, 15 seconds of that round. Yeah, you know, the last 10, 15 seconds is very important, especially on a, on a, on a two-minute a, round, a 50-50 round yeah. or a heads-up round. You know, you know, you don't know who's going to win the round. That last 10, 15 seconds, whoever gives the, la the last little push sometimes steals that round, and sometimes stealing that round could, could win that fight in the end. So both corners have left the cage. Napa BJJ representing Max Bryant, a.k.a. with John Ched Sanginoff as we are set with round number two. Let's see what kind of adjustments Bryant's corner has made. You know, he needs to feint a little bit. He can't just stand there and be a, 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 a still target. He's got to throw some feints, some jabs. Catches the catches leg kick. The leg. Rolling. Goes straight going for into the... that knee. But again, he's got to be careful. He can't do any twisting. So he has to use that to either take the back. He doesn't. And now, oh. Oh, uh, and that I, is I, I totally think that was, you know, on an accident. Um, you know, Bryant was getting up, and, you know, Sanginoff was eager to get in there, start mixing it up, and right. caught him right on, the, right on the junk there. And so Max Bryant will have a moment to regain his faculties. And we'll just take this time to... Do a little station identification. You're watching the Solano College Sports Network here in Napa Valley Expo. Bay Area Combat, North Bay Faceoff 2. Brian, uh, Brian Nelson alongside Brandon Kyle. I almost messed up my own name. I yeah. almost called myself Brandon. You, 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 in, the, in the middle of it, you were about to, yeah. It's uh, Brandon Nelson <laughs> and Brian Kyle yeah. here. <laughs> we'll just swap. Yeah. And then we'll swap halfway through the broadcast. They'll never know. You know, I, I know we have initial like good chemistry yeah. on the commentary team. I don't know if swapping names is, uh, <laughs> yeah. if we're at that level yet. I'll, I'll keep my own name if that's if that's it's a, all right, Brian. I, I just always like Brian. <laughs> that's all. I always wanted to be a Brian. I did too. <laughs> so I was very happy with my lot in life. <laughs> 
So Max Bryant, not to be confused with Brian, is uh, getting his time in the corner. Yeah, you know, sometimes you, you need a, a little bit more time, uh, depending on how bad it is. And uh, you never want to rush in there too soon. Uh, some guys, you know, they just want to get right back in there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think it's smart to take your time. Uh, make sure you're, you know, you're all set because that can weaken you to take that shot. So you, ooh, another good body kick from... But sure. again, yeah, Brian sure might have enough. caught that leg kick on the tail end as Saganoff misses wildly with that left hook. Again, going with the southpaw stance uh, predominantly is Saganoff. And this Brian. really does look like a striking, a, you know, a striker versus a grappler. This is a good old yeah. fashion. Uh, I'm trying to knock your block off, and I'm trying to get you on the ground and tap you out. Uh, fight, and, and which makes it interesting because you know, at every time they separate. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. Is Brian going to get the takedown? Going to get a good position? Is Sanganoff going to uh, land a big shot and hurt Bryant? You just don't know. Um, and that's why it's always exciting to see when they're standing right here, toe to toe, in the pocket. Yeah, Brian couldn't do much with uh, Sanganoff up against the cage, but again, second time. It was, I couldn't see from this angle, but if that was another low blow, we've had a warning. That was another nice low blow, uh, you know. We saw a point being taken away from Braden off yeah. no warning at all, which is, is very rare. So I'm wondering here what Kane Vandal, the referee for this bout, is going to do. Yeah, he did admonish Sanganoff with uh, a verbal warning of sustained control of your of the, strikes. Yeah, with the last one. So, you know, and the, and the ref usually doesn't. Uh, yep, looks like they're taking one. Uh, two times that happens, you know. Um, and it's unfortunate because, you know, you know, hypothetically say Bryant goes on to to and win the fight. We'll see a replay before oh, the... Oh, yeah, you know, gosh, that was a good one. Yeah, like, in, in the streets, angle. guys, that's a great technique. <laughs> you know, that's going to pretty much put an end to the fight right there, but we can't do those strikes here in the cage. Got to have some rules to protect the fighters. Nice another le left. Yeah, Sanganoff really finding his rhythm with that l straight left to Bryant. Yeah, he's, he's hurting Bryant with, with, with hands here, but Bryant is a tough, like I said, he's a tough SOB. He's coming forward. He's trying to grind. He really needs to take him down and try to finish on top. Because, you know, even if he gets a point taken away, you know, it could be a 9-9 round. He's still behind. He really needs to try to do as much as he can to win this round and make it a two-point swing if possible. Yeah, takedown would help, but Sanganoff ends up on top again. Similar to the first one, Superman punch left, misses. Yeah, jumps on in there, and you know what? Sanganoff is just... Uh, you know, kind of controlling this fight as far as uh, everything other than the grappling. And even in the grappling, it looks like Brian is trying to, you know, kind of a let me fall down with you and try to grab something on the way technique. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, th that, that can be effective. But a couple things that are deterring him from doing that here is, uh, is first of all, he's got these, you know, leg guards on, which when you're coming with leg locks, um, you know, and you're not used to, setting up and locking in leg locks when someone has shin guards on. Uh, so that's going to deter him right there. And plus, you know, he's eaten some some major shots every time. So it, it's almost like he's reluctant to commit. Um, he's kind of halfway going for things, and if it's there, it's there. But if it's not, um, he's in a bad position. So it's a tough game plan. You know, if it does, if it works, it's, it's spectacular. Oh, my God. If it doesn't work, it's a little lackluster and frustrating for the guy trying to do it. Um, once Bryant realized he can't strike with the guy and he can't take him down traditionally by driving him back, then he started using that kind of like unorthodox attempt of dragging down and getting submissions. And, you know, with a guy that's trained, you know, that's going to be tough to do here, especially with those shin guards. Yeah, so round three set. We'll see what Bryant has to offer here in terms of game plan and try to change things up. Well, I think even with that point deduction, you know, he still lost that round, so it's a 9-9. Nine, nine. I think, I, you know, I think Sanganoff is up two. Again, falls Got up a left with another left. Looks like Sanganoff is pouring it on here in round three, Brian. Yeah, absolutely, and trying to get side control on Bryant, but Brian. But you know, this guard. is a dangerous position. This, this right here, even though he's on top, is more dangerous for Sanganoff than being standing up with Bryant, just because even though he's on top and he's, you know, technically winning mm -hmm. in this position, uh, this is where Bryant feels a lot more comfortable, and Absolutely. this is where Bryant gets tricky. Look at him crawl up, trying to get the for arm that triangle, bar. Yeah, looking right. for that sweep. Now Bryant's now on, on top. top. See, Go that's how quickly he can switch. Bryant feels very comfortable on top. Hammer fist from Bryant, trying to follow, up, trying to finish, singing off, going into side control. Nice hammer fist to the body. 
of Sanganoff. We'll see if he'll maybe work a head arm triangle. You know, he's, he needs to set up some uh, a submission here, I feel like. Uh, you know, staying on top, you know, he, he still might draw. You know, even if you win this round, lost the first, tied the full second. Mount. Um, so I think he's got to be eager to go for that finish. He's got 45 seconds. I think he's got to do what he can to try to get this finish because if it goes to the judges, it's a big time coin flip. You don't know who's going to take this. 35 seconds left in this fight, but Bryant in the best position he's been in this entire bout. And you can tell the crowd has been waiting for Bryant to get in a dominant position. You know, him being the hometown boy, uh, been waiting for something to cheer for. As soon as he got that top position, you could hear the crowd just really screaming for Bryant. Uh, Sanginoff is kind of losing steam here, 15 seconds. Um, not gonna sure if Bryant's gonna set up an arm bar or something here. I, I suggest he does. I think he is. Here it Going goes. Going for it, and oh, great job of two hands by Sanginoff. Oh, Sanginoff's in trouble. It's close. Uh -oh. Oh, he wraps the leg over. He's going to make it to the end yeah. of the round. And that was a, a really exciting third round to a really exciting fight there, Brian. Yeah, buzzer beater for, for Sanginoff to get out of that armbar submission. And I think we might be in the first situation where we might have a draw because of that point deduction. You know, I, I can see it being 1-1 one, one plus a 9-9 nine, nine draw um, for that second round point deduction. I thought Sanginoff would have won that second round without that point deduction. So that's unfortunate for him, but he did. He hit Bryant twice. I'm telling you, those groin shots take juice from you. It, even though we recovered, it still takes away a lot of energy when you'd have to take a shot like that. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that was a well-deserved question. Not saying that Sanginoff intentionally kicked Bryant. Right. But once you get the warning and yeah, it happens twi again. Twice he let his strikes yeah. go into foul areas. And, and when that happens, sometimes you just got to take that point, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And this being the first fight to actually go to a decision, a heck of a fight at that. So Definitely. This will be an interesting one. First time Jim Cooley gives his announcement, and we don't know what the final Yeah, you know, we've been going for those officials. We already kind of knew, and now we get to find out what's going to happen. And it could easily be a draw here. So, um, Jim, the folks want to know. What is the final decision? Yeah, what we'll, you got for us, Jimmy we'll boy? What you got? The voice of champions. Ladies and gentlemen, after three action-packed rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score this bout the same way. 28, 28, we have a draw. Yeah, that was pretty easy to see. The crowd's booing, but I mean, how else can you but score it? Yeah, absolutely. We, we've gone through what Sanginoff did in the first round, and if it wasn't for that point deduction, he would have gotten a unanimous decision win. Yeah. But Ultimately, with that, that point deduction was huge as Jim Cooley calls for a, a rematch and the audience definitely, I would love to see a rematch between these two. I'd love to see these guys in there again. Yeah, especially now that they know each other a little bit. Uh, they train for each other a little bit more specifically. That could be a really good one. Yeah, both very young. We, we talked about the evolution of MMA, all these young, talented fighters. Sanginoff only 24, Brian 25. So. Plenty of time in front of them. They're just they're just getting their feet wet in the sport, and uh, you know they'll both learn. You know I think Sanginoff could use a little bit more uh, uh, composure. He's he's excited, throwing every shot with with 100% uh, gusto, and you can see later on uh, came to uh, came to pass in the third round. He had a he had not much gas. He didn't have a lot of explosion to get out. Right. So you know you got to be ready for that three round war. Uh, so you, you you know it's it's all part of the game plan. You know um, so Bryant's got to learn how to use some head movement, a little bit of fainting. Uh, he's got to throw a little to close the distance, uh, use that cage a little bit more to help to aid his takedowns. Um, and if those guys did that um, and then came back uh, for the next show, I bet the fight would be even better. Yeah, the card has been excellent so far, but folks, it's time. Fight will be the Bay Area Combat Light Heavyweight 205 title between Lamar Gozi and Gregory Morales.